It's day 367. I've got some bedding for the motorhomes. Uh, there's someone coming taking pictures of them for a, for a website today, like a bit of a photo shoot. So I'm gonna get my mum to iron the bed sheets because I've not got an ironing board. I don't know whether you can see, but the road's wet. We've had uh, nearly a mill of rain overnight, which is a bit of a pain because we wanted to get what we'd sown yesterday rolled. But it is supposed to be bright up. We've got some blue skies now. So hopefully it'll uh, soon dry off again. We'll get it rolled, but it's supposed to be really bad weather on Friday. That's a new set of pipes needed for that. Did you drag them all away? No. There's nothing. Well, that was lucky. Ah, you see. Oh, no, look at the end. I know. It's a bit worn out now. Just bounced. Just been doing our annual insurance renewal um, over the phone. Normally you do it face to face. It's actually amazing what NFU insure you for. Um, like if I, if I got coronavirus, I couldn't work for months. I'm at, they'd actually pay a wage for someone else to do my job. Don't know whether they do it as well though, do you? Quick update on the guy that was missing. He's been found safe and well, so that's good. It's a uh, new bird scare a day. I did all three and only one's arrived. Don't know what's going on there. Someone from Spalding's might be able to tell me. Just need to put it together. Put the tube on the end because it comes in a box. That goes on there like that. It should look like that one, but a bit less rusty. So that now, all shiny, ready to go. I bought them off eBay a few years ago and they were so stupid, like 40 pound. I thought I'd never see them because they were so cheap and it was a scam. Anyway, they turned up, but they were a little bit quiet. So we drilled the hole a bit bigger, but they, they uh, used to have their own battery in them, but they work better off of the battery now. No, it's just borrowing Adam's digger with the New Holland. Miss getting on camera though. That field's drying out nice now. This is going to be beans. Uh, Frank's just tidying up the edge of it. We, we moved some silt out of a pond and we put it on the edge of the field to dry out to land spread. But because winter was so wet, we've not done it yet. So he's just going to scrape it back, keep it neat and tidy. And then uh, when this dries later, hopefully get on with beans. But that nil of rain last night's made it a bit sticky, but it's starting to grey off now. Bet you've never seen me clean. Go to the dentist now. Motor homes have been washed for a photo shoot. I've got to go to the dentist to get me tooth x-rayed because apparently I could have cracked it up in the gum. So, when the bar where the handle hit me the other day, so I'm going to go and get it x-rayed. Charlotte and Peter are just cleaning off the motor homes. We've got a photo shoot with them in a bit. Wait, which tooth was it again? This one. Oh, it's fine, isn't it? It looks fine. Okay, so now we need to talk what... <laughs> Yeah, my tooth's fine, but apparently the nerve can die in the next few weeks. So I've got to keep an eye on it and I've got to go back in three weeks and get it checked. Because if the nerve dies, the tooth will go grey and eventually it'll fall out. So there's me thinking it was all alright because it wasn't cracked. But apparently if you trauma your tooth with an impact, it can damage the nerve. Definitely getting into the spirit of it there. Wild camping. This is, we don't want people driving in fields with them though. <laughs> this, yeah, exactly. Peter's driving all over me for the other week for the perfect picture. Just doing a photo shoot now for the motorhomes in my favourite field of wheat. I'm going to show you this here in the gateway. That's road planers. That's road planers and that's wheat growing out of it. Isn't that amazing the penetration that that John Deere drill has? Yeah. What do you think? It's a robin's nest. Robin's nest. Robin's nest on next door's horse box. Nothing in it. Go on, put it, put it back down. Let's work out where it's getting in. Could be, could be going up there. It's amazing, isn't it? Or maybe down there. Huh. Oh, wait. See the horse, there, isn't it? in the nest it's on its way 21st of june hopefully uh, it's getting built they're going to start building it in the next few weeks and um rb35 thor thousand liter so got a little brochure here look at that this has just arrived in the post it's a banner jcb fast track no one said who it's off so i don't know who to thank but whoever sent it thanks 
that's the tuck chip this morning. Just going to swap it now, put it on the Bowser, Borrow Bill's Bowser. Got a tanker on its way, should be here now. Look back on looking for it. Loads of stuff in the post today as well. Uh, some JM farming stickers off Josh, so thanks to them as well. Because John Deere's are a bit rubbish, you have to make your own bracket. They just give you a bolt hole in the cab, putting the screens on for your um, for the corn drill. So Adam's just making one now. You can hear him in the workshop grinding, cutting and welding. Don't know about a new spray, I need a bigger yard. It's just chaos. So everything's in the way. Uh, the tanker's on the back of this. The tanker's on the back of this. There's a new tanker on its way to fill it up. The sugar beet going out. Uh, there's just trailers everywhere. Normally this time of year, the sheds are half empty, so we can put a load of machinery in the sheds out of the way, but they're obviously full at the moment with uh, beans that should have gone but haven't gone, um, oil seed rape that hasn't gone yet, and then obviously we've got the other ones full of sugar beet, so we've just got no room to park anything. Windows, windows need cleaning on this, Andrew. Like a traffic jam in the yard of tractors. My liquid fertiliser I've been waiting for has arrived. He said, oh, he set off an hour ago and I thought they were winding me up because he should have been here. Turns out uh, he's had a blowout, stuck out his mud guard and burst all the tyre. Nasty. Adam's got the tyre drill on now, we're just swapping them because that's like a splitter boot. But beans can block in it, so we're putting one that's just straight out the bottom. You could normally put a smaller one on them, but there's not really any point, I don't reckon, so gonna set it up now it's got it on this 6 250r With this just alive. just just about With this F, feel alive. Feel a vegan. it just about picks it up <laughs> just putting this liquid on this field now and you see it's obviously totally uh, grazed by pigeons there's a big flock of them here when they arrive and um, the gas guns I ordered three last week and for some reason the Spaldings have sent me one yesterday and one today so I don't know what's going on there but I've only had two John um, yeah so we're all looking fusion waiting for the tanker and then it's turned up because it had a blowout and different things we've forgotten to bring the gas gun with us down here that we wanted so Andrew's dropped the bowels on the track and then shot back to get the gas gun we're going to set it up because there's like a um, little copse of trees in the middle of the field so we'll set it up in there and then hopefully it'll off. You can see there, see that the uh, footpath has sprawled into the field about six metres. But for some reason, there was people walking down it when it came, and the pigeons were still in the field eating it, so they're properly tame now. And I was hoping that the people walking all around the edge of the field and on the coastal path over there will have uh, kept the pigeons away, but they've not, they've just got used to it. They're used to people now, so no small mercy there. Yeah, Adam's at the yard now, he's, he's took the John Deere drill off and he's put the Claydon drill on. He's just swapping the cultures to the right culture for it. But we like the beans on wider rows because apparently they pod better near the bottom and, it's, and the, the, the bees get down to the bottom of the stems. Uh, we have drilled with the John Deere in the past, but we think the Claydon's better at it and hopefully the new portion has a wider row spacing. That'll be just as good as the Claydon. We did want to get drilling today, but with that rain this morning, it kind of put it back a bit. So we kept the John Deere drill on and kept going with that, and um, patched up some some of them poor headlands. The one I think I was on yesterday, was it yesterday? No, it was the day before. He, uh, he's, he's patched that up with some spring wheat, so any inputs were thrown at that winter wheat on the burr patches. At least there's some spring wheat underneath now that will take all the fertiliser we've put on them and start growing, and then come harvest, it'll all just mix in together and it'll, it'll all be feed wheat anyway, so it won't matter. Um, got a feel that we'll probably put some spring wheat in. I always like having a field of spring wheat because then if you get a wet autumn and you end up um, not being able to get on with your winter, winter seed then it makes spring seed very expensive. Well if we've got it in a shed it's easy to it's easy to just clean it, dress it and off, and off we go and it makes the decision to pull the plug on a bad field a lot easier to make if you know you've not got a lot of load more money and buy a new seed as well. It's amazing how COVID and technology's changed. At one time when you'd buy something, someone would come out and do the finance agreement for you, you'd sit down and you'd have a brew and all this. Now, you get an email with attachment, you click on it, you sign the screen on your phone, press OK, type your name in, press OK, press OK again, and there you go, you've just bought a combine on HP. Um, it's just not true. It's the single most expensive piece of machinery I've ever bought. And, um, I signed it while I was folding the boots up on the sprayer. Really annoying me as well. I need a new 
race, keep liking and subscribing. More importantly, if you're enjoying the videos, tell your mates or share them on Facebook so other people see them. Because that's the just clicking like and subscribe doesn't really make any difference. It's what how YouTube works is, is it the more people that watch them, the better for me. And the faster I'll be able to paint my sprayer off when it arrives. You can see in the mirror there, Bowser's there, just fill it up out of it. With the on the back left, we have a fast fill hydraulic pacer pump. So that fills up sort of twice as speed as a normal pump. So I'm just sucking out of that tank of the we see for the booms. Uh, it should fill in a couple of minutes. If you look on there, the gauge, we're up to uh, what are we? 800 litres now. So I've got 3,000 in. I'm gonna go and spray this field here, which the sun's really badly going down in my eyes. There you go, there's the field there. I think I've I think I've burnt my face today, the sun it looks pretty red. It's quite bright and quite low in the sky, I need to put some cream on or something on in the morning because someone said they might be damaging my nose, skin cancer or something. Um, I'll edit this video tonight while I'm spraying this and then you can watch it, otherwise it's going to be a late one. So I'll uh, get editing when I'm on a straight run or next time I'm filling up. Oh yeah, uh, I've just re remembered as well, the BBC aren't coming tomorrow now. I think they're going to come Monday because there's something going on with bosses, which is more interesting. But I know I asked yesterday, is anyone watching with the children? And would they be interested in, um, in doing a little piece to, to the BBC? But because of logistics and COVID and different things, they've said, could I get them some footage off the viewer? Doesn't matter really where they are. Um, just kind of like the camera watching the kids, watching the TV or whatever on an iPad of me. And then, and then ask them the question of what have you learnt anything and what do you enjoy about watching the videos and, and particularly like the, the fact that it's a bit of a lockdown learning experience so if anyone would be up for doing that um, message me or you know I don't know send me a video or something and then I'll I'll sort it out and get it in good quality maybe over whatsapp I don't want to give my phone number out because I'll just get loads of people stalking me um, but if, if, you, if you message me on, on Facebook or or Instagram or something or Twitter then what I can do is send me whatever it is I'll I'll send them on to the BBC lady and um, I'll write a WhatsApp or something then and she'll um, they'll edit it what, what they need and what will fill the gap that they've got but because it's going to be Monday now they don't know how long the piece they're doing yet sometimes it can be two minutes sometimes it can be four so that'd be helpful if anyone was up for doing it um, like I say get, get in touch going to set this up now the clock's changed next week so when it comes light at six o'clock in the morning we don't want it waking people up so we'll change that to two hour delay uh, timed and then we'll put it to 30 minutes no 35 minutes something like that and then number of bangs we'll, we can either have random four or three um, put it to random and then we'll give it gas for about five or six seconds and then that should be a decent enough bang uh, what it does is it opens that valve there, lets the gas into this chamber, and then there's a spark plug in the, inside there, and it basically just lets the gas in and then puts the spark in and ignites it and it explodes, and then that's the on and off switch. That's the tester switch to purge it to get the gas through the pipe because the pipe will obviously be full of oxygen at the moment, not gas. Filling up now, uh, just sun setting out, looks really good. This was uh, yesterday's quiz question. Yeah, it is right. Uh, a lot of people did get it right. It is a nozzle off the sprayer. It's a Defy nozzle, which is a forward facing nozzle. Uh, I use them quite a lot, to be honest, because they're really good for everything, not just spraying Defy, which is their um, pre emergent herbicide. Today's question is Does anyone know why I found a plastic pigeon in the field? I mean, I know why I found a plastic pigeon in the field, but do you know why I would have plastic pigeons in my field? If you do know or you think you know what it's for, leave a comment in the box below. Um, I'm editing now, so thanks for watching. I'll get it uploaded before um, I finish this field, hopefully, and then you can enjoy it before you can go to bed. So thanks again. Don't forget, click like, click subscribe, uh, and tell your friends. And then the channel grows, and I can get my payment paid off quicker. Okay?